Hi everyone, my name is Christy and welcome to my April 2021 empties video. Gosh, I feel like April went by so fast and it seems that way too because I don't have that many empties, especially compared to last month. I had so many for some reason. This month, I mean, I do still have quite a few, but I'm like, wow, I didn't go through as many products as I was expecting this month. <laughs> But as always, I love doing this video. It never gets old for me. It's so much fun for me to talk about hair care, skin care, makeup products that I have completely used up, that I have really gotten my opinion on. And actually a lot of these, even though I used them up completely, I wouldn't really repurchase or recommend them per se. And I mean, I'll go into why, but so, Without further ado, why don't I go ahead and start with some makeup that I used up. So I, this is not the first one of these that I have used up, but this is the e.l.f. Flawless Finish Foundation. And in one of my videos, you saw me actually take the spatula, the little spatty, tiny little silicone spatula and scrape out the rest of this because it's a bottle that is really hard to get all of the product out of because it's glass, it's a pump, it's square, so there's a lot of crevices of extra product in here. But this is a very inexpensive foundation. I think it was about $6 the last time I bought it, and it's such a great foundation, especially for the price, but I always use this when I review primers because it totally changes depending on how your skin is underneath. And it's a good like medium buildable coverage. So it still shows how my skin kind of looks underneath as well. So I love using this every single time I try out a primer. I'm also just so familiar with it. So it's a great foundation for me to use in that sense. And with the right primer, it looks so beautiful, natural on the skin. With the wrong primer, it can look a little textured dry depending on what's going on with my skin but this is definitely something that i will be repurchasing probably the next time i place an ulta order is where i tend to buy this unless i happen to be at a drugstore or walmart or something like that where i could pick this up in the meantime because i'm definitely going to need to get this very soon another makeup product that i used up is this Smashbox Photo Finish Primer Water. So I bought this in the sample size because I wanted to try it out and it was not cheap, but I went through it so quickly. This was, I think it was like a recommendation from Casey Holmes, a YouTuber that I like to watch a long time ago. She loved this. And so because she loved it, I took her recommendation and got it. And to me, it's just, wasn't worth the price and especially since i go through it so quickly when i use setting sprays or in this case a priming spray i like to really coat my face make my face like completely wet i don't just want like a few splashes of it like i want my whole face covered in it so that's another reason why i didn't love this i just don't think i love a spray as a primer. Like I much prefer a liquidy gel type of primer where I'm actually like rubbing it onto my face, applying it onto my face, creating a coating. Like I have large pores that I like to try and fill in with a primer. So I just feel like my personal opinion now is that I don't like to use sprays as primers. Of course, I love a setting spray on top of my makeup, but this I wouldn't necessarily recommend or repurchase, especially because I tried out other priming sprays, like dollar versions from Shop Miss A, for example, that do the same thing, are just as good as the Smashbox version. And then I finished my eye cream, which eye creams tend to last me for so long because you just use the tiniest little bit and i really liked this i would use it morning and night and it's from the brand nacific it's the fresh herb origin eye cream with calendula and to me it was just a very kind of simple like no fragrance or anything like that 
different too, but it's just like a white creamy eye cream that was very like hydrating, but pretty light on my eyes. So it was great under makeup. It says it's brightening and hydrating. It was definitely hydrating. I never noticed any difference in the color, the brightness of my under eye circles. It gave my under eyes that nice smooth texture. It never irritated my eyes or made them feel itchy or anything like that. And this is a Korean skincare product. It says it's with niacinamide, hyaluronic acid, and adenosine, this lightweight, airy eye cream hydrates the eye area and helps reduce the appearance of dark circles, puffiness, and signs of aging. So I definitely was trying to apply this like where I would be getting wrinkles. And I have to say, I mean, in the span of a couple months that I was using this, I think it's kept the wrinkles at bay. I don't know if that has anything to do with the eye cream, but I don't necessarily feel like this did much for like puffiness, dark circles, but definitely hydrating. I never felt like I needed to rehydrate my eyes throughout the day when I was wearing this under my concealer. So that's a really good sign. So a really nice overall eye cream. And then sticking with skincare, the two masks that I used up as part of my weekly mask, masking <laughs> that I would do, I used the from the brand The Sam Natural Shea Butter Mask. And from Lab For You, Juice Up Pumpkin Mask. And I felt like these were pretty similar, like nice sheet masks. I was going through a very dry time with my skin, so these are just really nice to deeply hydrate, kind of heal my dry skin. And I felt like both of them pretty much did the same thing for me. And I think that my dry skin is finally getting better. And I think using sheet masks like these really help. Neither of them were so amazingly different than one another or any other sheet mask that I've tried before. So I like sheet masks. It's not my favorite experience. I just don't find them to be super comfortable. So when I'm doing a sheet mask, it's hard for me to leave it on for that long because I'm just can't wait to get it off because I just don't like the feeling of just I like having set, like a wet mask. I don't know, but I'm not crazy about them, but they were just, they were fine as far as sheet masks go. And then another skincare product that I used up, but this time for the body, is from Barefoot Venus. And this is the Silky Smooth Argon Body Oil in the Coconut Kiss scent. And I have to say, this was the best body oil I have used. And what I really loved about it, first of all, is the spray bottle. Body oils in general are not my favorite type of product to apply because they take so long and they can get so messy, but the spray bottle like this made it so much easier. And then the other thing I love about it, oh, I can still smell it, is that beautiful scent. Barefoot Venus products in general just always smell so amazing, but the Coconut Kiss, it's like a vanilla, like a warm vanilla coconut, which is just like so tropical, but like, dessert like so nice and i loved the texture of this it was super hydrating for my skin but not greasy for an oil it just sat so nicely on the skin gave a nice sheen but it didn't like get onto my clothes or leave a greasy residue on my skin so it was seriously just the perfect oil texture just scent body oil application in general so I'm really happy with this. This might have turned me back on to body oils. And it has such good nourishing ingredients in it for the skin, which I love knowing that I'm applying good things onto my skin. And this also is created without mineral oil, parabens, propylene, glycol, or synthetic color. So you don't have to worry about like having bad ingredients going on to your skin with this. So I really liked this. Now that I finished this up, I'm kind of 
not sure what I'm gonna start using on my body. This was what I was using for like the past month or two or th maybe even past three months. It's lasted quite a while, but now I don't know if I wanna switch to a lotion, a cream, another oil, but if I had another one of these, this is what I would still be using because I really liked it. And then the last product that I used up is this John Frieda Sheer Blonde Go Blonder Controlled Lightning Spray. So I will use this when my hair is wet after the shower. I'll spray this all over. I'm really not particular about where I spray it. I try and spray it more towards the roots because that's where I know my hair is the darkest. And then I just brush it through and then I will blow dry and style my hair. So I haven't been using this out in the sun. I've just been using this with heat products on my hair. Although this is an okay product, it's not the hair lightening spray that I would recommend or that I repurchase. The one that I recommend and repurchase personally and have many, many times is Sun In. The classic Sun In, I buy it on Amazon now and I love it. I have never actually dyed my hair or highlighted my hair. All of the highlights and the lightness to my hair is from lightning sprays. And I just feel like this one doesn't get my hair as light as Sun In does. So maybe this one is a little bit nicer on the hair, maybe a little less damaging, but I would prefer my hair to actually have more highlights and get lighter. Therefore, I recommend Sun In instead. But I did want to try this one out just to see how it compares. And my personal opinion is I'm gonna stick with the cheaper version, the more effective version in my opinion, Sun In. Although I do love from the John Frieda Sheer Blonde Go Blonder line, the shampoo and conditioner. Those are other products that I've actually featured in my empties videos before and that I always repurchase because those I feel like really work well and help enhance highlights and lightening my hair. And those are all of my empties for the month of April. So let me know in the comments down below if you have tried out any of these products and what your thoughts are on them. And thank you so much for watching my video today. Be sure to like, comment and subscribe to my channel and I will see you in my next video.